Journey Through Parenthood with Martina Bills. Brought to you by Southern Ohio Medical Center. Very good things are happening here. Good Monday morning, everyone. I'm Martina Bills. Thanks for joining us here on Journey Through Parenthood on the WSAZ Now desk. While everyone is heading back to school, whether the kids started last week, today, or later in the week, or later in the month, and we're talking a little bit about the dangers of vaping and how you can raise awareness with your children, no matter their age, of just how dangerous these electronic cigarettes truly are. We're talking with Cabell County Schools and the American Heart Association about how they work together to raise awareness from very early on with these children in elementary school all the way through high school to make sure these children understand what they're putting into their body. So starting in upper elementary, we start the conversation about, you know, making healthy choices with our bodies and, and what is involved in vaping. Um, our kids use a program called Too Good for Drugs at the elementary. Um, some of them have also used the Catch My Breath program. We have the Healthy Heart Challenge with the American Heart Association. And so we just try to get them great information. Starting in middle school, it becomes part of the curriculum. So in our health classes, we have these conversations. It's, you know, something that's taught to every student, you know, throughout the course of their middle school experience. And then in high school, um, we kind of revisit it again. So it, it is never far from the conversation, and we integrate it as much as we can into what we're teaching. In addition, we have a lot of great um, student advocacy groups. Kids love to be able to, um, you know, make these choices known and, and have a voice in helping their friends make good choices. Once they understand the danger, sometimes they're very, um, they're very outspoken about it. And so things like our RAISE program or our PEP club, those are great opportunities. We also have DARE where we work with the local police officers. So there's lots of opportunities for them to hear better um, and to have the education to make good choices. Now is one age group or um, grade kind of more immersed into this kind of information because it seems to be more of an issue with the middle school kids? Is there because of that, you kind of want to have the conversation first. So that's where that upper elementary, you know, space is. I would say in sixth grade, we definitely, you know, sort of lean in to it a little bit more because um, that's where they're going to get more opportunities. In high school, we almost look at how can we help you if you are in a in an active addiction kind of situation. Um, and so that's into our, our response. But as far as prevention, we, we don't stop having the conversation. Um, every kid has a different, you know, uh, exposure. It just evolves. Absolutely. But we just make sure that we keep visiting and keep you know sharing that information okay so Wendy let's talk about the American Heart Association sure. and what your gr uh, programs are like to help with this vaping issue among sure. young children and teens yeah our, we have two programs that we focus on in the schools one is the kids heart challenge in the elementary schools the other is the American Heart Challenge in the middle schools and high schools and in these challenges we do bring um, all types of resources to light about heart health but when we get to upper elementary, again, fourth and fifth, we are now, um, last year we started the shift to prevention on vaping and tobacco um, as they learn their heart health. And then we've really tackled it in middle school to bring out uh, all types of resources um, to help educate, videos, lesson plans, all types of resources that can cover any counselors, PE, health, there's something for every teacher, every type in the schools through our programs to educate and continue the voice of, uh, you know, the fight against vaping and tobacco. And what about um, resources for families? How do you move the conversation from inside the classrooms to the homes? Correct. Um, one thing we try to do is, you know, start with the kids. Um, with them, um, give them challenges, information to take home, share with mom and dad, talk to mom and dad about it, um, use the principals, um, the coordinators, the PE teachers, whoever our contact person is for the school to send links home that educate the parents, educate the families, um, and just continue to um, make it community, not make it just the school, but make it school and community. Yeah, and that's what I was going to say. How can those conversations really talk to the children, depending on their age and appropriateness of the conversation? How do they talk about those dangers? 
it's really important that you do take into account where they are developmentally. Yeah. Um, we talk to our kids when they're little about all sorts of things we would prefer that they, you know, not do or, or dangers we want to make them aware of. So I think you just kind of sandwich this into that list. Um, so we talk about, you know, being cautious around strangers and, and being careful around vehicles, being careful about the things we put into our body is a natural next step. Um, with middle school and high school setting clear expectations before kids get there about in our family we expect. Um, and we would really like to talk about why. Uh, kids love to be able to put the pieces together themselves and when we say because I said so, while that is very tempting sometimes, um, they don't have that autonomy to do that. And so letting them, that's why we think sharing the statistics and sharing information about what's actually in a vape is really useful because they, they're not gonna lick a tire, they're not gonna you know, spray chemicals very in their face. Right. So make it very real to them about what is actually happening. You don't just look cool, you don't just smell weird, like there's actually other things and you need to know what they are if you're gonna make that choice yeah anything to add to that Wendy? yeah um, absolutely the um, commercials on TV and things now in so many directions they say you know you want to quit smoking try vaping it's an alternative to quit smoking but what they're not teaching the the parents and the families and the kids is actually what is in vaping mm -hmm. and when you break it down you realize there is way more chemicals, nic you know, nicotines in tobacco, but in vaping you've got chemicals and nicotine. So they are putting way more in there. So when you can have resources that can go home to the families like we have, like would be different worksheets, different, um, you know, uh, videos that the principals can link in, in messages home you know, like that that they we can help educate the parents better so that they can have the conversations with their kids and they can educate the children better. So another great conversation about the dangers of vaping with Wendy, Wendy Bradley with the American Heart Association and Dr. Ashley Stevens with Cabell County Schools. Both women very informed on just how dangerous vaping and electronic cigarettes can be no matter how old you are. And something that Dr. Ashley Stevens um, pointed out there when we're talking about the chemicals that are in vapes, it's not just nicotine that's in the cigarettes. It is all the chemicals and um, you know, your child isn't going to necessarily go out and lick tires or something, put something in their body that's harmful to them. Um, you know, say gasoline as an example. So you have to educate your children and yourself as an adult and as a parent about what is in these vapes and electronic cigarettes because there is so much more than the nicotine that they're inhaling and it can really do a lot of damage to a body no matter how old you are, but especially these young children where their lungs aren't fully developed. And so we're gonna be continuing our discussion with Dr. Ashley Stevens and Wendy Bradley on Wednesday here on Journey Through Parenthood. Talk a little bit about um, what to look out for and also really what to do if your child or you yourself is already addicted to the electronic cigarette. So a lot of good information here on Journey Through Parenthood this week. Going back to school, talking about these vapes and electronic cigarettes that are really becoming such an issue in many schools and especially those middle schools. Um, so we're just trying to inform parents and adults and teachers of just how um, extremely dangerous these, you know, tiny pieces, they can be, um, you know, concealed and they come off very um, secretive for many children, but they can be very um, dangerous as well. So we're just trying to get the word out so teachers, adults, parents, grandparents, if you're raising your young grandchildren in school these, eight, these days, you may not realize that this is an issue. Um, so here on Journey Through Parenthood, I also want to show you the American Heart Association's website on the ugly truth about vaping. They have a lot of good information for you at home to be able to find. Um, and you know what? West Virginia ranks number one in the country for middle school students who have said that they have actually tried electronic cigarettes. So if you want to learn more, you can jump on the American Heart Association and really keep in mind when your children are coming home from school in these next few weeks as school starts and really gets back up into all the classes and coursework, maybe their health teacher or their guidance counselor or their gym teacher will be sending stuff home throughout the year. And really you can read that with your child so they understand 
very early on just how dangerous this all is. Well, here on Journey Through Parenthood, you can always reach out to me on social media. You can find me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. If you want to send me a story idea or a comment on one of our stories, you can always reach out to me in those ways. And again, we'll continue our discussions about raising awareness on the dangers of vaping here on Wednesday morning with Wendy Bradley with the American Heart Association and Dr. Ashley Stevens with Cabell County Schools. We hope you have a great start to the week.